we have created agents out of functions and ports. Functions were defined as straight transition functions that define the behavior of uh, the agents. Now we are going to define agents in terms of classes and objects. Sometimes this is called active object. So, agents, as we said, are made stateful by using function, functions that takes a state and a message and create a new state, and ports. Now let us make agents out of objects. So, in this unit, we are going to define object-based agents. A class will define the agent behavior. The local attributes or of an object will be the local state variables of an agent. A method head will be the corresponding message that is sent to the agent. And methods definitions will be the message handlers, the code that is executed when a message is received by an agent. And this corresponds to state transition functions. Each object will be associated with a thread that reads the messages out of its corresponding stream and then invokes the corresponding method on the object. Here we have an example of a class definition that represents the behavior of object. But in our context, we are going to treat this as an agent definition. So let me explain. So this class will define the behavior of an agent. Agent have a local state. In this case, the attribute of the object, the local attribute balance, will be the local state. The agent can receive messages. In this case, we have one, two, three, four messages the agent can receive in it, withdraw, deposit, balance. And it also has a default method, this is default in the OS object system, which says ignore other messages. And if an agent receives uh, a message, it has a behavior. So the method defined here will define the behavior of the agent if it receives a message. For example, if it receives a message withdraw, so now we are using objects and classes to define the behavior of agents. How we are going to create agents out of this? By the same way that we did create agents before. We are going to use new agent abstraction and this will be modified in this unit that in this case it will take a class and it takes the initial message you want to send to the agent. So by calling new agent, we create an agent. And now if we look to this line carefully, so we are actually sending a message deposit to that agent. We are not invoking the method deposit on that object. This agent is actually runs in its own thread and it receives deposit and withdraw as actually messages and, invo and are invoked then on the corresponding object. If you run this deposit and then you send a message again deposit, you send a message withdraw and then you, you ask for the balance, you should expect to get the balance 100. Exactly the same syntax as before except now the semantics is different. We, this is is an activity, has its own thread, and it is actually receiving messages and invoking behaviors when it receives these messages. Of course, it's very difficult to see this, uh, that it really works, but 
you have to see it in another example where really these agents are communicating with each other by sending messages. Okay, one more aspect, which is how the agent sends message to itself. We know how an object invokes a method in itself by using the self, self, and then method. But we have special attribute in our agent called this, and sending a message to itself will actually we will send the message to these attributes which refers to the agent. Let us go and see a more interesting example that can distinguish agents from objects. Okay. And the file of all these examples exists in the course and you can play with it yourself. So here we are going to show an example of circulating ball agents. We have a number of agents. You can see them here. This is the case of four agents. And there is a ball. And what we are going to see is these agents are going to circulate a ball among each other. When we start with, with, with agent ball one, it will send the ball to the second agent. When this agent receives the ball, it will send the ball to the third agent. And where this agent ball three receives the ball, it will send the agent to the fourth agent, and then it continues circulating. So this is a question of agents sending balls between each other. Okay. So let us see how to define this agent. So we go step by step. So the agent is defined as follows. We have a class, ball. This class defines the agent behavior. We are going to have an attribute n will be the round number of the times the ball circulates around this set of agents. So when a ball circ circulates and comes back, this is one round. It continues and circulates and come back. This is the second round. I will give a number to the agent. So we can talk about ball agent 1, ball agent 2, ball agent 3, and so on. Agents will store the list of all agents in our system. So if we have four agents, four, the four agents will be available in these lists. The initial message in it will instantiate this local state. It will give the, the number of rounds you want to run this application, which agent are you, and the list of all agents. And let us now look to the method ball, which is the main method. When an agent, the initial agent gets the message ball, it does the following. It looks to the round number. If the round number is greater than zero, then it says it has to circulate the agent, which is forward the ball to the next agent in this circle of agents. So here we just print out that this agent have got the ball and indicated by the agent number and the current round number. So this is agent number and this is current round number. And here, we you, you could use the browse. There's another tool called inspect. Yeah, I think it's a little bit more efficient, so I'm using this tool, inspect. So what then the agent does? It decreases the round number. It waits for a second, and then sends the ball. This is the ball. To the next agent. So this is the next agent and it is the next agent modulo the number of agents in the system so the number of agents in the system is this and we use the mod operation or the modulo operation to get the next one so this if i'm agent number one it will send to two if i'm agent number two it will send to three say we have only four agents 
Then if I agent number three, it will send to four, and then four sends again to one, and things goes, and that's why we use a modulo operation. So here's an example of how to call this application. So we use the collect construct, we create four agents, and what we do is that we create a list of newly created agents. It's a ball agent. The ball agent is going to circulate the ball or the token 10 times. And, and the four agents will have different numbers. The first one is one, and the second is two, and so on. BS will be the list of all agents. Look how we are nicely using data flow variables here. So when we are calling this new agent, BS is still undefined. But after we finish the for collect statement, BS will be instantiated and all the agents will know the list of agents involved in the system. And then we just start by picking the first agent and sending the ball to it. And what you are going to get is incrementally you are going to get that agent one got the ball, then agent two got the ball, and agent three got the ball, agent four got the ball, and then it continues. Okay? And this is around number decreasing from 10 to 1. So even if we are now using object to define the behavior of agents, this program would not run if we just use sequential objects. So this actually is a, this program will never terminate if you use sequential objects. So now let us have a look now how to define the new Asian behavior. So our new Asian abstraction has to handle object created from function, state transition functions, or it has also to handle object created from classes. So here's our new agent definition. In OS, there is a basic module called value, which tells you what are the possible values available in the OS programming system. And there, we use the function value.type. This function will tell us what type of object we have. So we look to this value. If it is a procedure, it means that we should invoke a new agent that is specialized for procedures which are state transition functions. So new agent f is our old new agent that we defined in the previous sections. And if it is a class, then we use our new definition. It's a new agent. So let us look now to this one, the definition of new agent from classes. So here is a new agent, new new agent defined in a simplified form. So here is our new agent class. It takes a class and in it message in this case. It creates an object out of this class. This is the object. And it has P. P will be a port. And then it just creates a thread. The thread creates a port. And then after that, it just waits for messages on the associated stream and then applies the object on that message or invokes the corresponding method in that object. And it returns again as a value, a procedure encapsulating the port, and that is the identity of our agent. So it's very simple. It's very similar to the one that we defined before. So let us, this is simplified. So let us look now to how to also address, make an agent address itself by sending message to yourself. How we do that? In the object-oriented part of us, you send, you invoke a method locally on yourself by using the self-reserved word. We want to do something here with agents but not by invoking a method, but by sending asynchronously a message to yourself. So asynchronously sending a message to yourself, it might come, it might be running 
not immediately it might be running after you have received some other messages too because it is asynchronous so how can an agent send a message to itself so we need to store the agent's identity as part of the object state we never create an agent and this agent is based on an object then we need also to store the agent identity once we have the agent identity this can be ac we access it by at this this is just a convention then we can send a message to the agent by using as usual okay so let us now look to the new abstraction with at this so that's easy so p is a port the agent as we know is a procedure and this now is a class that contains one attribute this attribute is called this and this attribute will store a reference to the agent you see the lexical scoping here and now my class is a new class that is created by augmenting the original class that comes in as a parameter with this class that we just defined locally so so the new class will always have an extra attribute and this attribute is called this that's where the agent reference is stored now from my object we can create an object and the rest of the code is the same it's history we have done that before so we have just touched the surface of agent based systems there is a lot of things that you can do with agents what we have done is just the beginning so as a summary concurrent agent can be built out of objects that define the behavior or state transition function that define the behavior of agents. You can choose which one. We used ports to encapsulate the behavior of agents. So the implementation is not observable from outside. So what you are sending a message to could be an agent based on state, in, on state transition functions or on based on behavior defined by classes and agents communicate by messages these messages are asynchronous this is not like a method call which a method call is directly invoked is asynchronous and we have seen sometimes that we if we want to run internal protocol sessions we could use data flow variables as single value channels that is used just temporary within a local session there is so many other aspects that you can study about agents and we recommend you that you just look to the literature around here is my recommendation for further reading there is a very nice book on programming in Erlang which is called software for concurrent world this book is very well written and it's easy to understand and I recommend very much that you read this book another book where is called ACA concurrency this is a framework used in Scala Scala is uh, a new language uh, I will say a new language for the JVM the Java virtual machine that is becoming more and more popular and ACA is a framework to do concurrency there so ACA concurrency is a good book to read about agents it's, they are very similar to the one that we described in this, in this uh, uh, lecture. Thank you very much.